Welcome back. Well, my pup Benny and I just got in from exploring the muddy trails around here. Uh, it's mud season, that's for sure. So uh, I had to make sure he took a swim in the lake before we came back in the uh, got back in the house. But anyway, today I want to talk about the very gun that I was out uh, with today. Uh, we popped off, I'd say, probably about uh, 150 rounds with this uh, 1022. This has really become a phenomenally um, popular gun uh, all over the place. I mean, everybody just loves the 1022. This one here happens to be the Walnut Sporter. Um, I, I prefer the Sporter as, as much for its looks and its, uh, its heft and size. It, it, has a, it has a little bit longer stock than some of the models, which are configured, I think, a little bit to uh, satisfy smaller uh, shooters' youths. Um, and uh, but it's a it's a I've had this gun now for going on 10 years. Um, it looks almost as new uh, as the day I first took it out of the box. Um, it's done an awful lot of shooting. Uh, thousands of rounds have been poured through this. Let me uh, bring you over to the bench and we'll uh, show you how to tear it down, clean it up and keep it in top working order. You know, when U.S. Ordnance Engineers were designing the uh, 30 U.S. M1 carbine for World War II. I'm sure the last uh, thought on their mind was uh, entering it into a beauty pageant. It was strictly all about uh, function uh, above all else uh, and uh, suitability for combat. But you know, uh, a number of rifles through the years made by Marlin and certainly this one here have evoked that particular uh, aura. There's a certain mystique about that gun uh, that's in the design of the receiver and everything that just that just seems to capture uh, the imagination of Americans especially. Um, and this Ruger 1022 is no different. It has become a, probably without question uh, the most popular uh, 22, at least one of the most popular 22s in America if not throughout the world. Uh, it's, it's very practical. Uh, it's, it's simplicity itself. There's uh, very, very little to uh, go wrong. Uh, they, they shoot forever. Uh, they're very, very easy to maintain. Uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, and this one here is the uh, this one here is the walnut stocked sporter. You can see it's got it's got a nice uh, flat rubber uh, butt plate. It's got uh, checkering. Uh, the, t the typical Ruger design uh, checkering. It's not a bad piece of walnut either for a uh, for a sporter that's not overly priced. I think this this list, generally speaking, for a little over 400, but it's I don't think anybody ever pays uh, close to that. Uh, the uh, fore end in this particular model doesn't have the barrel band as the uh, many of the standard models do, and the carbine model does. It's got a it's got a 18 inch uh, tapered barrel and as you can see I've taken the uh, I've taken the liberty of uh, replacing the standard open rear sight with a uh, marbles marbles barrel blank and a very inexpensive barrel blank just uh, to cover that slot and I also put on a Williams uh, ramp peep sight which the combination between the uh, between the uh, glow front sight and uh, this Williams peep it's extremely fast um, you know you can you can keep a can rolling for a long time with that combination or or keep a uh, or roll a roll a rabbit if you want to um, very very efficient and the magazine is a flush mounted um, 10 shot rotary magazine for those of you who have not actually uh, seen this rifle up close and are interested in it, to release it is the same as releasing a Mini 14 magazine. It's almost the same shape and design lever. Just simply press it forward. Uh, if you have ammo in it, it just pops out by itself. But if it's if it's not loaded, you you just basically hold it. Gravity will take the magazine out and pop it in your hand. And there's the rotary 10-shot magazine. They're they're almost uh, they're almost foolproof. I've never had one fail on me. Um, it's got a cross bolt safety, which is different than the M1 carbine and the Mini 14, which has which has the uh, trigger guard safety that pushes fore and aft. But it's a very effective safety. Uh, cross bolt safety will block the trigger, um, and that's all there is to show. Let's take it down and uh, show you how to do that. 
What you need to have to service this gun is very, very simple. Uh, in the last number of years, uh, these barrels are extremely uh, high polish uh, inside. Uh, they're, they're hammer forged. Uh, they're very, very easy to clean. Uh, I'm going to depart from convention, my convention, when I say that uh, guns should be cleaned with, uh, you know, a, a standard conventional rod and bore brush. This rifle will clean up just as slick as can be with one or two passes of a standard bore snake. Uh, is, you know, unless you're using some particularly cruddy ammo, I can't imagine why you would have any difficulty. Uh, a a uh, M16 style brush or a toothbrush is good to get into crevices. Uh, it's nice to have a bore light always to uh, look down the bore afterwards and inspect it. You can have a um, you can have a simple uh, drift pin like this, and uh, you know whether you use a 3/30 seconds drift pin that you can use for so many other things. It's a nice thing to have on the bench, but you can also sometimes just uh, pop it out with a, a cleaning rod tip or something. You know you're only going to need uh, one, maybe two of these drops at the most of just just plain mineral oil um, and some uh, Hoppies number nine if you want to clean out the receiver if if you've got any uh, smoke. Uh, from basically what you get built up is a lot of smoke residue that uh, gets inside the receiver and sometimes a little bit of uh, particulate matter from your uh, from your uh, powder. Now I'm not going to use anything fancy. Uh, you know in my day uh, when when you look at when you looked at a, a boy's life uh, magazine uh, a lot of rifles featured uh, taking down with a penny. Uh, and, and that was, you know, because we didn't, uh, a nickel was something you used to go buy, uh, to buy a, a candy bar. You bought a, you bought a whole uh, Mars candy bar with a nickel, but uh, so a penny is all you need really to take down a, a 1022. And I, I guess now some of them have been ruined with a, uh, a hex head screw. Well, you know, I, I prefer myself a slotted, a slotted screw for a takedown. Uh, now you can use something fancier if you want to use if you want to use a hollow ground uh, if you want to use a hollow ground bit and that makes you that makes you feel better that's fine too but uh, I like to keep it simple before I take that completely apart I'll remove the sling I do have on here a nice uh, U.S. authorized uh, M1 carbine sling and it's got the uh, dot snap on the back and the buckle on the front. This is kind of cool. It's all it needs to uh, carry this around, the same as uh, troops did in World War II across Europe uh, and throughout uh, the Pacific. So I just simply back off, the, back off this screw. It's a rebated shoulder on this screw, so you do not want to remove the entire screw. Just simply back it out. Uh, it's got a brass escutcheon on the inside here that that, that screw head fits into. This is very important, extremely important. A lot of stocks get uh, irreparably damaged with this particular maneuver. Put the, put the gun on its back. Take note that this safety will not clear the wood. The, wood. the walnut here would get scarred and uh, damaged forever if I just tried to pass that, uh, pass that stock over that uh, cross bolt safety. So, it's important, and this is noted in the owner's manual. Uh, simply hold the safety in a midway position. I don't trust to just hold, let it go like that because invariably it'll it'll pop loose just as you get the wood near it. So hold it with your fingers. I'm going to rotate the front of the stock. In other words, I'm going to rotate this toward me and leave leave this end uh, still. So just pinch this. Rotate it straight toward me until it clears the wood, and it's off. So now that now that it's cleared uh, from that uh, cross bolt safety, it's safe to remove it. Now it it kind of if if when I'm putting it back on, uh, it has to it has to go underneath the trigger guard. There's a there's a particular section of the stock wood that uh, is inleted so that it fits underneath the trigger guard assembly, and that just simply pops down into place, and so again, pinch it, lift it up and off, and from the back. Once you've got it cleared of the, the face of the uh, stock, uh, you're good to go. Put that aside safely. But before I do, I just want to show you, again, this, 
this gun is almost 10 years old, and I fired thousands of rounds through it. It's been out in all kinds of weather. Um, you'll notice that there's no staining of the wood. Everything is everything is really factory fresh um, because I I don't I don't allow uh, gun oils to come in contact with this wood whatsoever. I don't allow gun oils to come in contact with any uh, stock wood because gun oils are not linseed oil. Gun oils are very destructive to wood. They have petroleum, they have petroleum substances and chemicals in them uh, that can damage wood and even even uh, mild mineral oil uh, is, uh, not, is not the best thing to get near wood because it will turn it punky after a while and it will lose, it'll lose its, the strength of the fibers. So you want to just keep the, keep the gun uh, as clean as you can and without, without getting oil uh, all slathered all over it. That is a big thing these days. It's, it's probably my biggest pet peeve. Uh, when, I watch, when I watch the ceremonies that people go through, the incantations with all the oils and all the concoctions that they use, it's absolutely, you, it's, not, it's not only unnecessary, but you shouldn't do it. Uh, it's, it's, it's harmful to guns. There's no, there's no good that comes from putting that kind of oil on guns. There are only three pins that you want to remove. There's the, uh, this Ruger calls it the, uh, the bolt stop pin. So that's, that's the, the bigger one of, the, that's the biggest one of the three. That just simply pops out. You always have to put that buffer pin back. You always have to put that bolt stop pin back in because that is what the bolt slams against and protects uh, protects the receiver from harm. Now don't be don't be conned into the notion that you need to somehow do something to protect the bolt stop pin or the bolt from that interaction. They that interaction is built into the system. Uh, it's 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 engineered into it, uh, it and it does not hurt the gun in any way, shape, or form. Uh, there's no harm that can be done to the gun by allowing those two surfaces to contact one another. That's standard. That's, that's, that's perfectly all right. Push your pin straight out. That's all you need to do in either direction. I just was showing you, you can push it from either direction. There's no, it's not like the Remington uh, trigger guard pins. And just simply remove them. And when you remove it, you'll notice that some, some 1022s, the ejector will uh, flop down and if it flops down just make sure that it when you go put it back in that it's captured within its uh, within its slot here in the in the uh, trigger assembly but this one here tends to have a nice it, it it stays in place but when you're putting it in sometimes you have to hold it with your finger so that it doesn't uh, rock down now you can take a you can take a look at uh, the inside of this I'm going to shine a light on this is this is a gun that has fired hundreds of rounds and you'll notice that there's no there's, there's no wear whatsoever um, thousands of rounds what am I talking about thousands of rounds this it's clean as a whistle in there um, you know I just had it out with I just had it out with my dog and we're, we're shooting all over the place this is this is what it does the gun shoots just an awful lot and there's no dirt in there there's no grime there's no crud and the reason why there isn't is because there's no oil in there to grab any uh, crud. Uh, you know, powder has a way of uh, shaking its way down into these recesses, and it collects and adheres to uh, oil, and uh, it attracts it. Is there anything that's going to wear out there? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, there's, there's nothing, there's, there are no wear points here. These, these pins are all hardened pins. Uh, they're, they're extremely hard. Uh, they're, they're, they're hard beyond... Uh, beyond any amount of wear that could be induced by uh, simply pivoting points. These, these, uh, the hammer pivots on that uh, pin right there, uh, it, it hardly, it hardly moves. It's, it's a, it's a very, very, it's a very, very low friction point. Uh, there's nothing that's gonna, there's nothing that's gonna wear out. The sear that uh, captures the hammer when it comes back is also hardened. Uh, those two surfaces can interact literally forever without any uh, breakdown. So there's no need to oil anything inside this uh, whatsoever at all. Nothing. The the entire the entire assembly here is made of uh, is made of a polymer. So there's nothing there to rust. Um, as far as the inside of the receiver goes, now we're just gonna 
we're going to show you how to take this back. Slide, slide the bolt to the rear by, by pulling on the uh, bolt handle. Now, at this point right here, there's a, if I can point it out, there's a, there's a track right here. You see that track, the end of the track? You have to bring the bolt back to the rear of that track. And this is where you absolutely have to be sure that you hit, must be sure that you have your bolt stop pin out. Slide it all the way back, lift up, lift up the, fr the front of the bolt, the, the breech face of the bolt, lift that up until it's captured on that track. Hold the bolt in position. Now, you're going to lift it, you're going to just simply lift the bolt straight up as you push this rod. There's a rod right here that the uh, bolt slides back on. With your other finger, push that down and that will release, that will release the bolt handle. Turn it over and the bolt will simply fall into your hand. Remove the, the handle through, don't try to lift it up this way, it's going to jam just right out through the ejection port and that's it. A few engineering notes about the um, receiver. This is a high grade, uh, very hard aluminum receiver. It receives no wear whatsoever. Uh, there's paint in here. I think the paint is very, very similar. It, it, it looks surprisingly like uh, the kind of paint that's on my uh, Weber grill. So I suspect it may very well be that sort of paint. It would make sense. It's a good, uh, it's a good durable paint. But through the years, it, it has scuffed off. It has scuffed off and left the receiver bare inside. It's of no consequence whatsoever. It'll probably continue to wear off more as time goes on. And if it wears it to a glossy surface, it doesn't make any difference. It's not going to change the gun, the, the gun in any way or change its function. It's, a, uh, it's not even a cosmetic issue. So uh, that's, that's, the only, that's the only thing that you might notice. Check behind, uh, the around the barrel. That's where you'll get carbon buildup from uh, firing. So take, take your brush. If you want to put a drop of um, hoppies in there, that's fine. Uh, you can put a little bit of hoppies. Let me just get a rag here. It's good to uh, have a rag to catch all this stuff. Just wipe it out with your with your hoppies. Uh, any any burned powder res residue that you might see, uh, that hoppies and and the uh, M16 brush will release it very very nicely. And you can see it's it's scrounging up all that. Uh, basically, it's just smoke that accumulates. Uh, so that's it. Go back inside now with your rag. But just simply clean up the uh, inside of the receiver. And that's it. That's as far as it. That's as far as it needed to go. I'm gonna now. I'm gonna pass my bore snake down through the breech end, which is always that's always the best way to uh, approach a gun if you can is to go through the breech end. Uh, and I don't expect it's gonna take more than one pass to uh, get it completely cleaned out. Sorry for being off camera for a minute here. Okay, I passed it completely through. You have to take my word on that. I'm just not tall enough to uh, reach up vertically while I'm at the bench. So that's all there is to it. I've got the I've got the barrel cleaned out. Uh, I can take a look with my I can take a look with my bore light by looking down the uh, front end of the barrel. And sure enough, it's uh, it's absolutely mirror bright. Uh, one pass was all it needed, and it's good to go. Uh, it doesn't need any. It doesn't need any uh, conventional cleaning with a rod, and uh, bore brush or anything like that, or patches. It's just. Uh, it's a very very bright bore, and there's no. There's no real abuse that it uh, sustains, no matter how much shooting you do with it. Restoring this gun back together is very very simple, but it can be. It can be tricky. Make sure that you place the pointed the conical end of that rod against that raised, raised surface in the back of the receiver right here. There's a face of that raised surface that's, that's got a uh, hollowed out, hollowed out uh, point. Then I just simply prefer to take my finger and pull this, 
pull this back uh, with with both fingers. But if you want, you can you know you can assist it by taking the blade of a screwdriver and using using the flat blade of a screwdriver you can you can pull it back like this once you get it back to the rear of the ejection port just simply hold it in that position right right there take your bolt uh, we want to just you know this this bolt is this uh, i'll do that on camera here so you can see um, just gonna just gonna simply wipe this down a little bit of hoppy still left on my brush. Uh, there's really nothing to clean up on these. Just do the face of the the face of the breech right here and uh, wipe it off. That's all there is to it. Uh, that that little amount of uh, hoppies. Um, just wipe off your parts. Doesn't matter if a little bit of hoppy stays on there. It won't hurt a thing. That'll that'll the rest of it will evaporate. Um, some some carbon sometimes sometimes collects in these grooves here. Any recess is a place where carbon will go in. So just clean it off until it looks good and bright. So we'll go back to we'll go back to this point here. Pull the pull the bolt handle to the rear until it stops at the at the window. Now retain it with your retain it with your thumb. You have to get this breech face behind behind this. Uh, rail right here. This this rail stops just a little bit uh, to the to the front of the handle. So you want to make sure that that drops down into behind that. First of all, you don't want to get the back of the bolt. In other words, you don't want to get this end of the bolt uh, into the receiver because it's just geometrically it's just not going to it's not going to make it. So simply drop it down in in position as you release. A little bit of pressure on the handle. Let the handle come forward just a little bit as you keep your finger pressure on the bolt and it'll drop into its way. And that's it. That's all there is to it to getting that bolt out. So see if I can repeat the procedure. Pull back, lift up, push down on the rod, release it, reverse the procedure, pull the pull the handle to the rear, put the bolt in front of that, in front of that. Uh, in front of that uh, track, drop it down in, let the bolt come forward just a little bit. There we go. Make sure you have the, the handle far enough back so that it can engage that, uh, in, engage that uh, slot in the, in the top of the bolt. Okay, we're good to go. We can just simply put this back together. Make sure that you have your uh, hammer uh, withdrawn and it's locked in place. Hold on to the ejector if it's necessary, if it doesn't uh, capture itself, and just simply place it back into the back into the receiver. That's all there is to it. Now you just want to push those pins in. There we go. Just manipulate the uh, trigger guard and that will sometimes forward and back. Now I've got those two pins in, hold them in place so they don't slide out and put your bolt stop pin back in. Make sure you put the bolt stop pin back in and again, don't don't worry about the fact that the bolt slams against the bolt stop pin. That's exactly what it was engineered to do. No harm done whatsoever. It was never going to it's never going to harm the gun. You don't have to enrich somebody uh, for some product that the gun uh, doesn't have to have. Okay, now if you notice, I got to hold those pins so they don't fall out. Right here, there's this slot right here. This needs to engage this section of the stock right here. There's a there's a section of the stock right here that's raised. You see it right right here. This needs to pass underneath that portion of the uh, trigger guard. So all you need to do is just make sure that you have those pins captured so they don't fall out in the middle of the whole process. Work. Slide the, again, slide the trigger guard into position. In the back here, slide the trigger guard into position and just drop it down on. You don't have to worry about the, you don't have to worry about the cross bolt safety coming from the other direction. There's, no, there's nothing there to harm. Uh, and just tighten up your tighten up your screw 
You can use your old penny or you can use any screwdriver. It's not necessary to get a hollow ground screwdriver for this. If this is, if this is the only gun you have, uh, anything will do. There's no, there's no torquing of that screw, just, uh, just finger tight is sufficient. You back in order, everything is good. Thanks for watching. Um, make sure you pass along uh, these videos to your friends. Be sure to subscribe also, and God bless.